This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring Maurice Linguist, the head coach at Buffalo. Coach Linguist discusses his rapid career growth, influences in the profession, and involvement in the AFCA. If you like this podcast, make sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new episodes each week. Now, let's get Inside the Headset with Coach Linguist. Coach Linguist, what's going on, brother? How Mario, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Oh, man. Well, just everybody that's listening, uh, Coach Linguist is a is a former teammate of mine, a good friend, uh, somebody, when I was a young coach, uh, he got a quick, a little quicker start. We're the same age. He got a quicker start in the profession. And uh, I appreciate all the advice as a young coach when I was blowing your phone up. You're trying to figure it out at the same time, and Listen. I'm hitting you up asking for advice, man. So I always appreciate our relationship. No, man. Always, man. Always from, seems like, I mean, how quickly time passes. Yeah. And, getting a chance to play with you and seeing all your determination, your work ethic, and and then transitioning into coaching and everything you're doing now with AFCA, man, it's been it's been phenomenal to see. Yeah, and, and likewise, man, with you. Uh, now let's let's dive into this thing, man, because uh, I've known you all these years, but some of these questions I'm I'm actually curious about, and uh, definitely be be great for our listeners to kind of kind of learn about your journey a little bit and you know how you influence and how you've uh, really impacted that culture there at Buffalo. Um, you are a DFW native. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of the mecca of high school football, some would say, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, as a as a high school football player, you played in Mesquite High. Yep. As a senior, won the state championship. Yeah. Go play at Air Force. End up transferring to Baylor, where you're a three year starter. Uh, you know, all Big Twelve player. Uh, you, 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 bottom line is, you have a phenomenal football career from the high school to collegiate level. You know, at what point in time in that journey? Did you say, man, I I want to be around this game as long as possible, whether I'm playing or not. Sure. I want to be a ball coach. And who were some of those, you know, coaches that you got to be around at, at Mesquite yeah. and or Baylor that you know allow for you to want to pursue that? Yeah, definitely, Mario. I mean, as you mentioned, I uh, was born in Dallas, Texas, and then uh, grew up right off of 635 in Skillman. And then in middle, middle school, my mom bought a house, moved us to Mesquite, and uh, went to middle school and high school in Mesquite. And I went to Mesquite High School. Uh, the Mesquite High School. Let me just give, <laughs> give a quick shout out. And, and uh, had such a tremendous uh, football experience there. My head coach was Steve Halpin, um, uh, Coach Norris. David Norris was my DC, and and uh, just had phenomenal environment in terms of a football envir- environment. Being around that at 14, 15, 16, uh, 17, just um, just felt like it uh, it shaped a lot of the my worldview on a lot of things. Just the work ethic, the determination, uh, mindset, and attitude you have to have, and had a great, great, great experience there from an on the field playing experience and uh, won a state championship in 2001 at Mesquite High School, 5A state championship and, and uh, all the things that kind of went into it and, and um, really seeing the, the joy that it brought the city. It was Mesquite's mm-hmm. first state championship as a, really as a city. And there's, you know, our big rivals, North Mesquite, Skeet across town. And we played against some great guys like uh, Terrell Brown was over there and Aaron Harris that played down in Texas and a lot of guys that had great careers and you kind of see you saw how football could bring a whole community and city together it was just uh it was everybody rooting for mesquite when we went down to that state championship and as you mentioned um from mesquite i went on and and um it's 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 such such phenomenal i just think my message maybe uh maybe can relate to a lot of people where um uh, you know i won that state championship i led the team in interceptions uh that played really well and didn't get a single division one scholarship offer mm-hmm. and really felt in my heart that i had the ability to do that um and then um uh, air force prep school came calling uh the prep school down there uh came calling and i really believed in myself and 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 really had a uh whether it was from naive or whatever it was i really truly believed i could play at that level play at a division one level so i went to the air force prep school and then from there a lot of opportunities kind of presented themselves where i had the opportunity to come back to baylor after that um, uh, from the prep school and 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 uh, ended up getting a scholarship, going back down to Waco, coming back down here, um, and and that was my path and that was my journey and kind of felt like it gave me a healthy competitive chip on my shoulder, a yeah. little bit of an edge, a little bit of a mindset, knowing that you know maybe I was one of the, you know lesser ones that they wanted or however I got there I'm here and I want yeah. I wanted to prove it you know I wanted to prove that I had the ability to do it something I always felt like I had the ability to do and and um and then just uh had a phenomenal playing experience and career here guys like you guys like sean bell that's over there uh quarterback coach at baylor and just a lot of great teammates um, a lot of guys that we played with now in the profession coaching a lot of coaches that influenced us all and and um and like everything else in life you know you're just trying to uh trying to learn as much as you can along the way taking as many great qualities as you can and implement them yourselves yeah now uh i definitely remember you been been 
not not just a great football player. Obviously, you all conference. You 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 put the production on the field, but you always a very high IQ. You know what I mean? You you made a lot of plays because of your physical attributes. Don't get me wrong, but also just because your 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 high IQ. Uh, and I know you had a DB coach that you built a tremendous relationship with, and, and Larry Hofer and, and Wesley McGriff, a corners coach, who was. Yeah. If you don't know who he is, just go Google him. He's, <laughs> he's a phenomenal recruiter and coach. Um, what you know, which one of those guys, you know, at, at, once again at any level, were very impactful, and you wanted to stay in the game. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if I ever had the, you know, light bulb moment where yeah. it was like, hey, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, but I always knew. Um, I feel like coaching is a calling. Yeah, I do. I feel like God put it on my heart. Um, as I continued to play, I knew in my mindset I always wanted to play. You know, I wanted to be a player. I loved the game. I loved you know what football, the opportunity that it provided me. Um, I respect the game so much, and and maybe, you know, pre- pretty transparently, that's why I went so hard at it. You know, in yeah. my mindset, like like so many other guys do, because I, I respect what it was able to. I was able to get an education and do those things, and and then I think the power of influence of just the coach, the, just the uh, football journey that I had from my high school coach Steve Halp, and um, um, and then uh, the the coaches that I had had here. Chris Lancaster was the first contact that I had uh, that got me really from Air Force um, to the the first call was from him from Air Force to Baylor, and then uh, Weston McGriff. Uh, Never forget the story. Weston McGriff was at my high school. He was at Mesquite High School. Uh, I think he was over there recruiting somewhere in Dallas, and he made a sharp turn. And, and Guy Morris, I think, told him to come over here and check me out. And I'm in the field house, and 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 um, and and Weston. That's the first time I met Coach McGriff. I was yeah. I was 18 years old. He was he was in the uh, down there in the field house in the office, and Coach Halpin was kind of pounding the table for me. And and then Wesley came out and said, "Hey, man, we we we, we want to give you an opportunity." Uh, later went on and took an official visit down there, and. Um, they weren't sure if I was going to play, you know, corner or safety. So I had the influence of being around Coach Hofer and as yeah. well as Wesley McGriff, and then, and then ultimately transitioned into being 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 in that safety position, and then really being coached by Coach Larry Hofer. And uh, you know, that's the power of football to me. You know, just the power of you know, they're all different coaches, different styles of people, different influences, different walks of life, and you can learn something from any, every single one of those guys. And uh, when I got married, Coach Coach Hofer came to my wedding. You yeah. know, that's the power of relationships, right there. That's you right. know, I mean, he was there at my wedding when I was there, getting married down there in Houston, and and um, just had such phenomenal men that were in my life. You know, Weston McGriff is a guy I still talk to now. Everybody knows Crime Dog. You know, Coach McGriff and and the uh, the career he's had and the influence that he's had on so many guys like me. And um, and I just feel like there's been so many influences that God has put in my life that has just kind of led me on a journey and a path. Where I'm not sure if I could just say, "Hey, this was the moment where I, I know I'm going to coach," yeah. but maybe I never saw myself doing anything else. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's yeah. just I'm not sure if there was anything else other than being around the game that I ever had in my mind. Yeah, you just can do that collective experience. <laughs> you could never get away from it. Yeah, just just how, however that happened. Uh, now, real quick, I just want to hop into the early part of your career. I think that's something we our listeners always have a big interest in. Just how you kind of navigate the profession, especially as a young guy. You know all, all 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 the hoops and stuff that you have to go through to get, kind of get those first couple jobs. Now, immediately after your playing career, uh, you actually joined the staff at Baylor. Larry right. Hofer, who who you mentioned a couple times at, as you were a player, was the safeties coach. Right. He transitions to the defensive coordinator. Correct. Um, they bring you on. Just you know, how, did you express interest in, in this job, or did he express interest? You know, in, you? <clears throat> in my mind, I wanted to continue to work out. So it's kind of a few different things going on all at once. I was I was fortunate enough to finish undergrad early and so I was playing my senior year uh, in grad school I finished I complete my senior year um, like you mentioned and and tried to maximize that last year that I had and then wanted to continue playing so I so I kind of transitioned into like a lot of guys you're done playing you're trying to work out for pro day and it was probably a little bit more by happenstance you know um, Gary Joe Kenny was our linebacker coach at the time and uh, he had some a uh, couple couple health issues going on so he had to take a little time away during the spring and they were kind of down of a body, but it wasn't going to be a long-term permanent thing. And they yeah. they wanted a little bit more of a familiar face to come back in the office and help out with. So yeah. they were paying for my grad school. I'm working out to see if I can continue my playing career. And probably had a first uh, contact from Coach Hofer, just like, hey, you want to come back in the office and help out and and see if this is something you would be potentially interested in. I know, I know you want to play. And uh, in your mind, you're not necessarily, you know, um, digesting everything that's going on. You're just like, hey, you know, I'll always come back and help out. And, yeah. So I kind of just showed up early and just kind of used my instincts in terms of what, you know, how can I maximize myself in this office space? And 
I think uh, I, I was I was sending faxes. I was making coffee. <laughs> I, I just knew work ethic and hustle. So yeah. I just started getting stuff done. And yeah. um, I think one of the things that benefited me early on, and uh, you mentioned like that that first transition in coaching uh, from from I ended up staying on that spring, mm-hmm. and and then um, Clay Jennings was the DB coach at the time. Uh, Weston McGriff had left. Got a chance to kind of be with Clay Jennings that spring, summer, and just learn, soak up information. You know, as a player, you you know what you know, and then you realize that when you you transition into the other side, I mean, you really don't know a lot. You yeah, know, there's a right. lot that you yeah. just just don't know, and you don't know that you don't know. So it's how quickly can you adapt? How quickly can you learn? How can you be a sponge? How can you contribute? And so I, what I told myself was I'm not going to limit myself by maybe knowledge, but you know what I can do is get things done and 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 just try to maximize myself and being a great presence in the office. So um, I would go through the office, ask ask all the coaches what they wanted to eat for lunch. I'd go get their <laughs> lunch. I'd, I mean, if you needed to pick up your kids, if you had to go to the cleaners, yeah. if you there was not a job. I mean, with with maintaining some slight dignity to myself <laughs> that that I wasn't going to do. Yeah. But it was, I th- I th- to me, it was just how could I support the program? How could I just give back? How could I uh, just uh, bring the greatest amount of value into this football office as possible? So it was, it was making cards. It was breaking down film. It was doing whatever the coaches needed me to do mm-hmm. and, um, and just trying to bring good energy and a good attitude into the office every single day. Um, the, 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 the unique thing about, I, I, would, I believe, about just the experience that I had is that the first opportunity that I got to be a full-time on-the-field coach came – about eight months later, um, when I got the job at Valdosta State, so I spent the old seven season on staff at Baylor. Um, the season we complete the season, and it was actually one of the offensive coaches that knew one of the assistant coaches at Valdosta State, and they were looking for a secondary coach. Mm-hmm. Well, it taught me a great early on lesson that I never limited myself to maybe you know well it's, you know, I had this great relationship with Coach Hofer, and I knew a lot of the coaches on defense in the office, yeah. but I was going to be as accessible as I could to all coaches. Yeah, right. So if I could do anything for any one of the coaches, I wouldn't leave the office without scanning those hallways and, is there anything else you guys need? Is there anything else I can do before I get out of here? And the first phone call that I got about a job was an offensive coach yeah. at, on the offensive side of the ball at Baylor picking up the phone and calling about me uh, um, uh, to one of the coaches at Valdosta State. And that's what got me the first opportunity, um, and and God maneuvering the path and working things out for me that way. Yeah, that's 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 kind of crazy. I, I would have knowing you all these years, I would have never guessed that. I just would have figured it was yeah, you know McGriff or something like that, yeah. or Clay Jennings just helping you out. But it's through your through through your ability to kind of go through it and, and and work hard for everybody in the office opens up these opportunities. I do want to say this, and this is a, a good mention. Uh, guys like uh, Cornell Jackson, who's up at Central Michigan now. Um, Jason Phillips was our wide receiver coach. I mean, those guys, young GA, got through playing. I mean, they they took me to Men's Warehouse, bought me some bought me some slacks, yeah. And it's like, hey, let me let's get you some office clothes. And I mean, just things like that uh, never left me. Yeah. Just the the impact and the influence that just so many coaches, selfless mindset, selfless attitude. How can we, you know, help develop me? And they and uh, I, I'm just so appreciative to all the all the coaches that all had an early on influence in my life. No doubt, man. Well, I want to talk about this real quick because you, you brought up Vadasa State. Now, around that time frame, I think they're fresh off a national championship. Yep. Eight months prior <laughs> to that. Yeah. You know, you, you you didn't know anything about drawing cards or yeah. anything like that. You know, how are you going to take a job of that magnitude? And you said something, you said something that typically every other podcast, like, I really go and chime in on. You think you know so much as a player. You sure. just, and even now, I mean, you've been in the game 13 years. I'm sure you, should, especially, you know, been two years as a head ball coach at the FBS level, you're probably still learning things daily. Uh, you know, w- what was it like to take that job and just have to go prepare to prepare other other young sure. men for life, ball, and all that good stuff? I think it was a, it was a great um, growth experience for me. Um, you know, getting a job is one thing, and then actually performing and doing the job is is a, is a whole other thing. And I always had a mindset that if you were going to bet on me, um, I wanted to show that you made a good investment. That's right. You know, I wanted to show that if you know if you were gonna if you were gonna put your name on me, if you were gonna uh, say you know what or, or recommend me for something or just kind of whatever in any way show any type of um, uh, uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on coach. I, I wanted to show that I wanted to prove you right, and so. Yeah. How quickly could I learn some of the things that I didn't know, and then how could I contribute as much as possible, and how could I just be diligent in doing the job? So, you know, I took my, you know, uh, my mindset was, you know, I'm going to figure this whole thing out along the way, and and obviously, 
Uh, it's a growth process. I was 23 years old, and I'm at Valdosta State. So much tra uh, tradition there, so much great history, so many big-time ball coaches that have come through there. Um, I wanted to form great relationships with the guys. I wanted to make sure they knew that I cared about them. I wanted to make sure that they knew I was competent in what I was saying. But um, you only, you only kind of know what you know. Um, but I was surrounded around um, a lot of great coaches there at Valdosta. Joe Cawthon was our defensive coordinator. Um, I think he's over at Utah State now and, and um, uh, gave me an opportunity to come on and coach and be the secondary coach there. And I just wanted to uh, just wanted to make sure that I was diligent, had a great work ethic, and and just tried to uh, contribute as much as possible along the way. Yeah. Well, I, I, I kind of want to transition a little bit to talk, like I said, about some of the stuff you're doing with your program and, and, and the leadership skills and, and, and everything that I've seen you do firsthand and uh, that, I, that I know everybody's loving from you over there in Buffalo. But real fast, I just want to talk about your career kind of <laughs> in a whole because yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot to dice through every stop. But uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through this real quick. You, you spent eight months at Baylor, tops as, as, a, as a GA. Uh, you go to Valdosta State, you're there for a year. You go to James Madison, you're there for a couple years. You go to Buffalo for the first time as an assistant. Right. Um, you, you move from uh, G5 to P5, going to Iowa State. The staff is let go, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, around that time. Yep. Go to Mississippi State, you spend some time with Dan Mullen. Uh, you go to Minnesota, you get the opportunity to be assistant head coach. Uh, uh, still, still a defensive back guy. Um, go to Texas A&M, you're in the SEC, one of the top teams in the country. Go play at the uh, you know play uh, go coach at the uh, at the professional level with the Dallas Cowboys. You get this very very short stint as a DC with the University of Michigan, and I mean a little over a decade later, you're you're head ball coach at at, at Buffalo. Um, I want to talk about some of the stuff that you got from all these different awesome coaches that you got. But before that, I, yeah. I want to talk just a little bit about. You know, what I got to witness as I, as, as I was a coach and a profession at this time, uh, I, I just felt like, you know, I'm walking in rooms, you're nowhere near, <laughs> and guys are talking about, hey, yeah, you need to go see 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 Maurice Linquist over there in Mississippi State. Man, he's got this good little deal that he does. Man, I saw it at a clinic. Uh, there's always a lot of buzz around your name. I remember you gave me a call in Louisville. i never forget this. You said, hey, man, you need to come meet me down here. And I'm in a room with the who's who of coaching. And it was just a tremendous networking opportunity. And we're just in some uh, restaurant, just just a bunch of ball coaches talking. And uh, I just always admired how you networked and how you, uh, you know, you, you let through your work and through your production, people know that you're just a tremendous ball coach. You know, what was, were you doing that purposefully? I, I, I know the answer to this. Were you doing that purposefully? But I, I guess I'll ask the question this way. How did you keep that buzz around your name? And how did you always maintain these, Phenomenal relationships with all these guys. To, to if there's an open DB job, everybody's trying to figure out what Molinquist has going on. Um, it's a great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to unpack a little bit. Yeah, and, yeah it was a lot and, and just and just think through. Um, I think when I was, uh, I'm a believer, and I'm thankful for. Sometimes I know I can maybe have a plan or order things out, but but I know that God orders my steps ultimately. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I was younger, my, you know, my grandma taught me a great life lesson in terms of how to slow down and how to listen and how to pay attention. Um, I've had a, a, a great spiritual background, I feel like, personally, in my life with my aunts and cousins, a lot of great women in my life that have always prayed for me. My mom taught me work ethic. Mm -hmm. My mom's the toughest woman I know. She, I mean, up up in the morning, uh, worked her butt off for, for me and my brothers and and, and showed me like really unconditional love and um, it's something I really carry strongly with me now. Um, you know, my wife is a Baylor grad. I met my wife here at 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 Baylor uh, in the cafeteria down the down the road, and and, um, and my wife's from Sugarland, and she's the smartest person that I know. She just is a great sounding board for me, and we really she's been with me through a, through this entire co coaching journey. Um, and I've just, I think from a non-coaching perspective, I've leaned on a lot of great people and a lot of great women for me in my life that have just been a great influence just guiding me through things yeah. um, from a non-X and O specific way, in a non-X and O specific way. And then when it comes from the, the football journey, you know, I, I get a chance to spend, you know, three phenomenal years with Mickey Matthews at James Madison University as a secondary coach. And uh, at the FCS level of really up the upper echelon of, of F FCS, you learn a lot. You learn yeah. a lot of things. I mean, you learn 
uh, from a recruiting and an evaluation standpoint, and how to how to get your guys lined up and, and and daily discipline and those type of things. And I learned a ton my three years there at James Madison. I get a chance to make the jump from JMU to Buffalo, and you know, as you quote unquote your first D one job, mm-hmm. and um and and really wanted to. You know, I just think the experience of being able to go to a bowl game, uh, which you don't have in FCS, mm-hmm. but you kind of have at the Division One level, was a great experience for me to, you know, uh, you know how to put together a year plan in terms of how you're taking a team from, you know, from regular season into that championship season and how you use those those bowl game practices strategically and how you organize those type of things, learn those things there. Uh, as a young assistant coach at the first opportunity to go into a bowl game there. And then I make the jump from, you know, being D1 to, you know, quote unquote, power five, Mm -hmm. which I just think sometimes from a, you know, from an optics look, it's always, you know, when you got that kind of that P5 attached to you a little bit, but from, from, from my own personal growth and development, when I learned uh, from, from uh, Paul Rhodes there, I mean, I mean, you talk about, I mean, you talk about the discipline and work ethic. I mean, Paul Rhodes did a phenomenal job showing up every day, Great energy in the office, uh, getting the most out of his team, that all-in mindset. I go from uh, Iowa State to uh, Mississippi State with Dan Mullen. SEC is its own old, old another level. You start mm-hmm. you start getting into your upper upper level courses when you when you enter the SEC. You know it's a different. I say different. It's just a ball is ball. ball, is ball. Uh, the intensity of football um, is, is really strong in the SEC, and you learn. You know, the intensity, the urgency you have to have. Dan Mullen taught me so much that year that I spent with him there at Mississippi State. Coach the safeties was a, was around a great, phenomenal staff. We uh, we go to a bowl game. We win a bowl game there. Um, and then really envision, never really envision making different moves or doing other things. Um, but then I got a phone call from P.J. Fleck. And sometimes you kind of just know when you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I spent a little time on the phone with him, and, and I was kind of captivated by him a little bit. And just uh, he engaged me and – and um, uh, just felt strongly, um, you know, uh, just from, a, from from phone calls and conversations that I had with him, got a chance to sit down and talk with him. And he wanted me to join the staff and, and laid out a really a, a big picture plan, which I really hadn't, can't say I really had really thoroughly thought through in terms of, you know, maybe like, hey, what does it look like five years from now, 10 years from now, you're so laser focused in the moment on what you're doing. Um, and, and not sure if I did the best job of saying I wanted to roadmap certain things through, but I uh, had a chance to have conversations with PJ about certain things that kind of maybe unveiled a couple things to me, and um, he, he's probably you know maybe one of the first. I'm not saying I'm going to say he's the actual first, but one of the first. He looked me in my face and he's like, hey, "You're going to be a head coach one day, and here's how I want to help you." And that engaged me a lot, and uh, it sparked a different, uh, maybe a different mindset and attitude in terms of uh, what things maybe could be. Um, so I go up there with PJ, uh, and then I'm, uh, he's named he's, uh, names me as assistant head coach, and I wanted to prove him right. I wanted to do a phenomenal job for him. PJ, if you're listening, hopefully I proved, proved you right. And, and uh, he's still a great friend, a great mentor to me now. And, and um, you know, he's a phenomenal teacher and, and, and finds so, so much create, creative ways to get the most out of his team. Um, uh, but then we had the opportunity to go back home to Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife grew up in Sugar Land, as I mentioned. I grew up in Dallas and in Mesquite. And, and when the phone call from Texas A&M came, it was – Again, you never really envisioned. My daughter was born in Minneapolis. I mean, we, we had a home in Minneapolis. We loved Minnesota. We loved Minneapolis. We felt really strongly about our ability to be successful there and win. We had a really highly rated recruiting class, which people, people later on saw. Yeah. Uh, you want PJ won a lot of games with with Rashad Bateman and Chris Williamson and uh, Winfield. Antoine Winfield, high draft pick, was one of our safeties there. And um, so you never really envisioned leaving, but we, we take the job at Texas A&M. So much ingratitude and, uh, with PJ, but we take that job uh, at Texas a and I get my wife back. I'm husband of the year. Yeah. We're yeah. back in Texas. <laughs> my wife's an hour from the house. She's yeah. on this journey with me. She's been in Virginia. She's been in uh, New York, Iowa, um, and uh, we're back in Texas now. And, and, um, and I'm with Jimbo Fisher. I'm with Mike Elko. Uh, and and we we just get to work, you know. We put together a couple really great recruiting classes, which later on they uh, uh, they went on to the uh, Orange Bowl, I think it was. And and uh, the year before, year uh, after I left, they ended up winning the Orange Bowl off of a lot of that young talent that we were able to get in there and kind of set that culture there a little bit. And and then you get a call from the Cowboys, and and um, I mean, I think I'd probably be foolish to say that that's something that um, I hadn't always wanted to do or in the back of your mind yeah. sometimes. And an opportunity to showcase what you can do at the uh, professional level in the NFL. And 
um, uh, when uh, Coach uh, Coach Mike was hired there in Dallas and and uh, gave me a phone call, got a chance to go up there and be with Mike Nolan, who was the defensive coordinator, and and um, and and spend spend that year there as a secondary coach, and and then <clears throat> from a big picture perspective, um, when 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 Jim Harbaugh called about being co-defensive coordinator and, and really having a coordinator title and responsibilities attached to it uh, from a growth perspective is something that that really intrigued me. Um, again, never initiated the phone call. You know, it's just um, certain things kind of happen. And then you, along the way, sometimes people can see the jobs you take, but sometimes they don't also see the ones that you, you've turned down. You know, so there are certain things that I did not do that later on I've, I've kind of soundboarded with my wife about and, and, and really thankful that we maybe we did this and not and not did this and – but that's my journey and my story a little bit, you know. And then yeah. we spend the spring there in Michigan, and um, the Kansas job comes open. Lance Leipold, who was a former head coach at UB before right. I was there, takes the job in May. Mm -hmm. um, I get a phone call. Here, you'll appreciate this. I live. We're in Frisco. I got a house in Frisco. I'm with, with Dallas. I moved from uh, Frisco to Ann Arbor. I'm in Michigan. Family's back in Frisco. Um, the the I finally get my family moved from Dallas up to Michigan. The moving truck is in the oh, wow. front of our house <laughs> and Buffalo calls. The AD from Buffalo, Mark Allnut, calls the day that the moving company was moving my family. I just got my family from Texas to Michigan with me. I'm like, I see my kids. I got three yeah. little ones. I'm so great to see my family. I've been missing you guys. I've been back and forth. We've been trying to do this remote thing, which we don't do. You know, I, I need my family with me. And, um, and uh, uh, the the moving companies they're literally carrying the couch in, and and um, and 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 then phone rings. I got this Buffalo area code down there, and I'm like, what is going on? I answer the phone. This is Mark Allnut, the uh, uh, director of athletics at, at at Buffalo. Want to know if you'd be interested in talking to me about the head coaching job? And I, and I look at my wife, and I say, you won't believe this, and this is all true. <laughs> And she told the moving guy, she said, just put everything in the basement. We don't know what we're doing. Just put everything. So we moved everything in the basement in this house in Ann Arbor. Um, Mark Allnut calls me and says, hey, listen, we want to talk to you about the head coaching job uh, here at, at Buffalo. Uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to buy a, a, a flight. And we're going to reimburse you for everything. It's a little bit short notice, but we want to get you on a flight as soon as possible. Yeah. You find one that works. Here's the time frame. You buy a round trip flight. We'll fly you out. We'll talk to you. We're going to fly you back to Ann Arbor. We'll let you know where things are at. Mm -hmm. Well, I told my wife, like anything else, I said, I'm never going to go out and 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 uh, interview for a job if there's not real interest. I had been an assistant coach at Buffalo before, yeah. knew so much about uh, the history of Buffalo. So I bought a one-way flight, and I packed for two weeks. So my wife is like, why are you packing all this stuff for a short little interview? Yeah. I said, well, I'm going to go get this job. I said, keep everything in the basement, and I'll let you know when you're moving out to Buffalo. <laughs> They didn't know this. So I get out there for the interview, and they're like, Coach, we never saw the return flight for you to go back to uh, Ann Arbor uh, for after the interview. And I said, well, I never planned on leaving. I know we got a lot of work to do. We got three months before we play our first game. Matter of fact, it was 106 days before we played our first game when I took the job yep. over. And I said, I can't waste time flying back to go pack and do things that I could have already thought through and done before. Right. So I said, I'm ready to go right now. I packed for two weeks. You guys let me know where the keys are, and we'll get to work right now. Let's get it. We are, I got offered the job right there that day, signed the contract that day, turned around the next day, met the team, and got to work. How about that? So I told our team this story, and I said, you know, you know, I think in coaching and in life, there's hopes, there's belief, yeah. and then there's expectations. And I think when you expect, uh, and those, all those things are critical. You, you can believe and you need to hope and you need to have, but ultimately when you expect, you do. Yeah. And I said, why would I ever pack for two weeks without, without a high expectation? Why do, we, you know, why do we do things in a certain manner? When you expect, you do. Um, and, and really, really uh, uh, told our team that story, and it's all true, and, and uh, got, our, got our butt to work and yeah. moved the family from Ann Arbor to Buffalo, and we, we've been going since. Let me, let me ask you this question. I, I, a blessing that worked out where you didn't have to go. Uh. I, I may have been at the counter sitting there like, you guys got any last minute? I never, I guess I never even, I never, never considered, I never even considered it not working. I said, plan A. I said, well, maybe if they didn't offer it to me, I would have just, uh, hey, I'm going to show up no matter what. I, I, I'm going to start, I'm going to start like, hey, I'm going to do the same approach I had when I was a GA. Just get, get in the office coffee. and start doing stuff. <laughs> If I just get in this office and start doing stuff, they they can't fire me. <laughs> that's a, that's awesome. Now, uh, let me ask you this because uh, that, you know having that expectation, I think is, I I know you, so having that expectation mm -hmm. is not far fetched at all. But you go look at pa on paper as an athletic director, and you say you're the co defensive coordinator, but you hadn't coordinated before, right? right? Um, now you you had a 
couple weeks, maybe a month or so, where you were the assistant head coach at, Miss, uh, at Minnesota before you actually took the AM, A&M jobs. That very easily could have went a different way if, sure. if they didn't feel like you had, you know, had the experience. Right. Um, you know, what did they see in you? What, what, what do you think as you went through that interview? And it's a whirlwind because I know that Tom was in May, yeah. right? Uh, in that whirlwind, what do you think it was that they saw that said, this is our guy? I know you it's know, hard for you to answer. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what, and maybe I may, I, so maybe good for me to ask them one day. But um, I do believe this. Um, there's a lot of great qualities that can make, you know, that maybe lead people to success. Um, things that I've always believed in. Um, among any other thing, you know, be genuine and be real and 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 and, and be authentic to who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I tell recruits this, I tell people this, I tell our staff this, you know, uh, maybe um, in a very humble way. Like, I'm, I mean, everybody's not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. Yeah. You know, but the people that I am for, I connect with really well. Um, I want to I wanna make sure they know that I care. I want to make sure they know that I'm competent in what I'm doing and, and that I'm consistent. Mm-hmm. And, and that, you know, ultimately, you know, I want to serve the purpose of why God has me here in this profession and how can I uh, hopefully – do and cause as much good as possible. How can I have a ripple effect of, and whatever that means and wherever that leads you is wherever it leads you. I know that we have a real objective to win and there's certain team goals and program goals that we want to accomplish. Um, but I, I, you know, I want, you know, I told our, we had, we had a young man on our roster here at Buffalo. He had a one, 1. 1.4 GPA his first semester in college as a freshman. Right now he's on track to have a 3.5. Mm. Could not be more proud of him. I mean, I'm, I'll put your grade on the fridge like your mom and dad used to use to back <laughs> yeah. in the day. I mean, yeah. I want to have a, a ripple effect. I want to have a, a, a legacy of, of how, how much good can we create? Um, how much good can we leave behind? How much, you know, what, what, what I do for myself, or it, that dies with me. Mm-hmm. But what I will do for my players and what I do for others and what I do for my family and what I do in the community, that stuff lives on. And, and, and can we – can we live and walk in a way and and um and 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 just behave in a way where you know it 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 truly is about you know leaving a great impact with people yeah. and I, I i i genuinely believe in that like i i think that's why god has me doing what i'm doing and and there may be coaches that are you know maybe more qualified or do certain things better than me um and 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 uh, you know all the blessings to them and all i mean i want to be genuinely who ha- who i am and and um Lead, lead with the consistency, lead with love, and lead with accountability. And I think sometimes people think about the love word. And, you know, we love our guys at, at, at Buffalo. I've loved my players along the way. I've, I've had so many guys, even now entering the draft, guys that I've coached um, for long periods of time and short periods of time. I was at I was at Michigan for one spring. DJ Turner just got drafted here in the second round. Uh, <laughs> he, he shoots me over a message in terms of like, hey, you know, thanks for the impact you had. I was with him for four or five months, you know, and just – how can you connect with people? How can you lead in a way that's genuine, that's real, that's selfless, but also um, we're not enabling you. Mm-hmm. We're not compromising who we are. Uh, we have high expectations for you, and we're going to hold you to a high standard and a high way of accountability no matter what we do. And I think there's a sweet spot and there's a balance to it you know, that you yeah. can have where you operate in a really healthy space that's sustainable over long periods of time. Man, man, I, I, I tell you what, there, there, you, you've said something – that I, I'm going to make sure I tap on before I ask you our last question. Um, yeah, but the passion that I see from you right now just in this room is is, is definitely contagious. And, uh, you know, just as, as a friend, I definitely watched all your games and uh, just seeing the relationships on the field yeah. after a kid scores a touchdown, uh, makes a pick. I mean, I'm going to tell you this. So my, my, <laughs> my barber, my barber back in Buffalo. Let me give a shout out. My barber back in Buffalo, he's got a huge barber shop. He cuts all the Bills players. He cuts all these prominent people. In, in Buffalo, well, he brought his entire barber shop to our spring game two weeks ago. Oh, wow. So he's cutting my hair right before I fly down here to Texas, and he said, you know, Coach, something I loved about your team? He said, you know, when one guy made a play, I mean, the entire sideline erupted. And uh, that stuck out to me, man. Yeah. I was just like, man, you know what? You know, we got our own problems, and we got things we got to continue to improve on. We got things we got to fix, but, I mean, but that's it. That's it. You know, that's it. That's the sweet spot, man. That's where yeah. you that I mean you're in you're in the area now where it's like you get it. Like, guys, yeah. this is man, if we can if we can all, you know, support each other this way, if we can all make it really about this team, if we yeah. can all put all those things that are 
differences and, and, and the things that separate people, if you can push those things to the side and really earnestly and intentionally and genuinely say, you know what, I'm going to do what's in the best interest of each other in this team and, you know, and I want to, you know, lead those young men the right way. We're going to maximize our opportunity to be successful every single week. That's right, man. Well, that's awesome you shared that story because I'm I don't know your barber, and so clearly this is genuine, man. I'm watching, I'm seeing this, man. I'm, you know, as a former coach, you you definitely want to see those things in in a good football team. You know that yeah. exists in good fo- football <laughs> programs, and and even your involvement always got me excited. You know, jumping up. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm in there. I'm in there, man. Yeah, man. You're right I, in the I, mix. I got I got I got one with the hamstring sometime now. I got I got to be careful now. The mind is strong though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and man, it's it's just so contagious, and I I know, especially especially today, man. It, you know, we we talk so much about culture. Yeah, and I I just remember in high school, you you walk. I remember recruiting high schools, and you walk, and it's a hundred different things on the wall. Sure, that, that you paste up, and right, it's clearly more than that in, in Bu- at Buffalo. And uh, and I I kind of get a sneak peek. I know Stacy, uh, remember remember from Baylor, your yeah. wife. Uh, obviously, we're we're friends on our social media. So I, right, you got the, you got the kids out. You know, the kids are with your kids. They're watching you be a husband, a father. I mean, just just Mario, all that great stuff I mean, that goes into it. I appreciate you mentioning that and saying those things. It's like you. you I mean, you're a husband. You're a father, yeah. and 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 um, those are my first two. I, I mean, I'm a believer. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I I, I can't get fired from those jobs. Mm-hmm. I got I got to win at those jobs, and um, I have a great responsibility um, with my wife and my children, um, but. You know, this past spring in February, <clears throat> we had every single – you know, it's one thing to say I had the team over. Mm-hmm. Uh, once a week for eight straight weeks, I had a different position group That's over right. our house. Yeah. And I'm not checking a box. I'm not saying, hey, you guys came over, you came to the head coach's house, and, hey, we did this. No, I mean, like, I want a small group. I want to intimately – like, my wife's going to ask you about, you know, how's your – you know, how's your – How's your how's it going on that uh, communications test you have coming up? And you know what classes are you doing well in? What classes are you struggling with? And hey, you know what? I saw you missed that practice. My wife will call you out too. You know, I saw you missed that. I saw you missed that tackling practice. I need you to make that tackle. I mean, right. and they know that they, you know they got those eyes on them, and then they're gonna see. You know, my my son, my son will. My, I got a, my son Lance, a three year old. He's he's turning four this summer, about the same age as your children. And, mm-hmm. I mean, he wants to go to school with, with the cleats on and with the gloves on. If he can't go to school with his gloves on, <laughs> oh, it's, over. It's, it's a temper tantrum. <laughs> well, I know he's watching those guys, yeah, right? right? He's watching. He's, right. Those are his heroes. I mean, those are, I mean, they're like, they're, 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 those guys, he comes to practice and my, my, my children are up there all the time and my wife is uh, up there uh, uh, periodically. And, and uh, you know, that's why it's so critical for me. My, my football family, my personal family, and we just, how can we blend those two and intimately entwine, intertwine those two. And my, my son can go down the list. He's three. He can name all the players. My wife knows all the players by first name. They know that. And um, kids know, man. They know it's 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 when it, when it's when it comes from, I think I always say, messages from the heart always enter the heart. Yeah. Things that are real always enter real. Things that are from the heart always enter the heart. I think that's why, you know, we have a great strong connection there up at Buffalo. You know, you know people are talking about, you know, transfer portal and all these things and recruiting and all these things, you know, we, we haven't had a single guy go in the portal. You know, this portal window opened up right here and that's not a credit. That's a credit to our staff and the, and the, and the kids and the connection that they have together. And I think my, I tell my wife all the time, she does a phenomenal job with the players and the team and our assistant coaches, wives that do a great job and our administration. I mean, it's, you're, 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 it's so much, there's so many layers to it and what you're trying to create this environment where it's so much more than what I put on a shirt or what we put on the wall. And those things do matter Amen. for consistent yeah. messaging purposes. But ultimately what matters is, is who you are and what That's you right. do. That's right. And and the consistency in what you do it with. Yeah, man. It, it's, it's so crazy because I want to talk about leadership with it. I feel like we, we definitely tapped <laughs> into it just organically, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I do want to ask this question because, you know, and you're a tough person to ask this question to. You know, four years four years ago, there's no way that you thought you'd be an FBS coach right now. You, you know, it may, may, maybe you knew you would be an FBS coach, but just right now, how quickly it kind of just – just as you tell the story from the Cowboys to Michigan, uh, the truck pulling up, all of a sudden you're a head coach at Buffalo. You know, uh, all those years, all those great coaches you got to spend time around, you know, were you – did you have a folder somewhere where you were just like, hey, I like this, don't like there's that? A, there's a folder, uh, maybe there's a file, and then there's a, like, encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I've always tried to be an intentional, cur- keep my mind as curious as possible. Yeah. And 
I mean, I'm learning things from you right now that you don't know that I'm taking with me and I'm going to use and implement later on. And, and just how much good information, I mean, good information can come from anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Good information can come from Kenyon, our, our janitor back there at Buffalo. He knows. I, I'll talk to him about what's going on in the building all the time. I mean, he's got eyes everywhere. And yeah. he, you know, hey, he's, oh, Coach, you're doing a great job. The guys are working. I'm like, yeah. I mean, just, I mean, work, good information can genuinely really come from anywhere. That's right. um, and then I think, um, you know, being around good information is one thing, but but when you are, when you understand that you're, I mean, I've been blessed to be around, you know, people highlight the phenomenal coaches, even assistant coaches that I've worked with, uh, even even uh, you know, you know, listen. I got a my daughter when when I, was, when I first had a child, taught me some great life lessons. And, and you become a father, how to be patient. Great life lesson. I use it right now with our team every single day. Um, she woke up every morning with a smile on her face. Didn't, didn't 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 know where she was living. Didn't know anything. Didn't she was smiling and having fun every single day, and and really had a a, a real spirit of joy. Yeah. Um, to herself, and that's a great lesson I learned from my child. Yeah. So, uh, yes, did I learn great qualities in terms of you know how to program organization and how to structure a pack practice from from my time in Dallas and 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 how to uh, how to recruit and how to coach and how to teach from PJ and how to do so many other things from Jim Harbaugh to Jimbo Fisher and to Mike Elko and and all these phenomenal. Yeah, I learned all those things, but. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be something today that I'm going to maybe walk into a store today and, and find something out about. And, and I love being firm in your beliefs and convictions, but always having space to grow. And, and, yeah. and, and, you know, real intelligence is if you are off, you know, how, how quickly can you get to the right answer? Yeah. And then, so you're always constantly, cause you're, you know, your building and your scheme is never really settled. You know, at what point do you ever say, you know what, I, you know, I clap my hands. I got it all done. I got it all figured out. Yeah. Never really happens. Never so happens. it's it's a moving body. It's always living. It's always breathing. You know, everything has a timing, a rhythm, and a flow to it. And what you're trying to do is, you know, if you need to change something, change it. Yeah. If you need to Im improve something, improve it. If you just need to emphasize something, do that. If you need to adjust something, you're just trying to operate in the sweet spot where you don't have to be perfect, but you have to be in a really good space over long periods mm -hmm. of time to actually give yourself real sustainable success and I've learned a lot along the way. I think um, I've allowed myself in the space from a mental capacity to keep an open mind, be curious, try to find things out, try to try to stay ahead of things. And um, yes, I, you know, I was one of the guys that probably I wrote a, a press conference introductory speech, you yeah. know, four or five years ago. What would it sound like? What do, what would it look like? You know, if this opportunity ever did come about, um, you know, how can you be as prepared as possible? Because you're never really fully be prepared until you're in that seat, until you go through it, and you gotta have the you know the the uh, the toughness and the grit to, to go through the scars and build and grow and learn and persevere and anybody that's accomplished anything really good in life they've been through something. That's right. Right. You've and you, what the the goal the key is is it, what did you learn along the way, and and really how can you use that to to best uh, uh, fit you moving forward and I, I hope that as I continue right now I continue to do that now and um, uh, you know. I love when you know I'm thinking about something one way, and then my my belief changes or gets adjusted on it. I mean, I think it's phenomenal, and I, man, you grow. You know, yeah. it's awesome, Coach. Man, this is this is powerful stuff, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at the time here. I I, I got a couple questions I got to ask you, <laughs> okay. and I got a couple more that's going to force us to have a round two of this at some point in time in the yeah. future. Uh, this was the question that you kept saying that throughout throughout this deal, and uh, I, I want to highlight it because this would be easy to miss for a lot of listeners. A lot of the transitions you made throughout your coaching career, you, you said we, you know, we took the job at AM. You know, we went up to Michigan. And uh, now I know you, and I, I know what's important to you, and you made it very clear without me even asking this question. But why do you frame it we when you're talking about <laughs> Stacy and those three kids? Well, and I say we because it's it's Stacy, it's it's the, it's my 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 daughter Mara, uh, it is uh, my son Lance, it's my newborn Leon. Uh, it's Steve Halpin. It's uh, me and you in this conversation now. It's Brandon Whitaker, who was a teammate. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's Guy Morris, who believed in me. It's um, it's Wesley McGriff. It's Larry Hofer. It's um, the opportunities that I thought I wanted to get that I didn't get. It's mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, da David Bailiff taking an opportunity to, uh, to interview me when I was at Rice and taught me certain things just through an interview process that I had to learn. It's It's such a big... There's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing that I've ever done in my life that has been just me. Yeah, and I'm very aware of that. I'm very clear on that, and I know that very much. And ultimately, it's 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 
it's my belief and my faith, and I know that I know that uh, my Lord and Savior is ordering my steps. He's ordering and dictating my steps. I want to just be have a listening ear. Um, I'm going to mess something up. I'm I'm going to try to get it right the next time. And I know that this is a community. This is a journey. It's the coach that I don't know that's listening to this podcast right now. That hopefully you've learned something from that you can use and implement. That uh, maybe our paths directly may may never cross, but uh, the responsibility that I have to give back, the responsibility and the platform that you've created here at AFCA to uh, impact and change lives, to educate, to support coaches that are out there to grow this great sport of football. Um, uh, this is a this is as much as it's you know it's it's a ball on the field. I mean this is this is the worldwide it, it, it's a worldwide uh, uh, thing that we're on, and and I know that you know we all have a responsibility. It's a big journey we're all carrying together, and I want to do my part. Yeah, I want to do my part. I appreciate you kind of sharing that, man. Like I said, I, I caught that and knew there was a lot more to it than 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 uh, than just hearing it. So I uh, appreciate you sharing that. Now. Uh, one of the last things before I uh, before I talk about the AFC briefly, uh, you you finished your second year as a head ball coach in the MAC five and uh, five and three in the MAC, went to the Camellia Bowl, beat Georgia Southern and another nail biter crazy <laughs> game. Uh, enjoy watching that one. Um, you know I'm gonna ask you two parts to this question. I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask them right now together. From a program standpoint, what was the biggest change that you saw from head coaches on the outside looking in from year one to year two? From a very personal coach, Maurice Linquist, um, what was the biggest change you you, you had internally yeah. from year one to year two? Oh, you don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a big question. Here's what I would tell you. Um, so many things. I mean, just so much respect to, to all the um, – I will say this. I want to take time to say this. Um, uh, middle school, high school – JUCO, college, professional, if you're a leader of, of an organization uh, and they're out there listening, um, just so much respect to the responsibility that those people carry. Um, it's a, it is a, um, it's, 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 it's monumental in terms of the influence and the impact that that leadership position and the ripple effect that it can create. Um, and probably, to say you you understood those things is 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 probably naive going into it, um, and until you kind of sit in those chairs, you really understand um, how you know why is leadership so important. You know what? Why is it important to lead? Why you know people we use these leadership terms and these and these buzzwords and culture and all these things, and what you really find out is that you know the 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 messaging and the influence and the and the language you use and the way you operate it it has a ripple effect of every single person around you every single day and probably had a greater sense of understanding that going going from us uh, from from that what you call maybe that one year to year two and mm -hmm. and really wanting to you know as much as you know <laughs> I'm gonna probably pride myself on being diligent and out preparing our team and watching more film and, and, and go ab going above and beyond and creating relationships in the recruiting space and preparing our team from an on the field standpoint. But, but ultimately that responsibility you have as a leader to lead the organization the right way. <clears throat> and, and, and then how can I be my best leader? Well, I got to continue to work on my own self, right? You got to, you know, as much as I can gain, gain knowledge about things, I want to refine who I am. I'm in a constant refining of who I am and what I believe and why do I believe it? And are you convicted enough? And cause it's going to get tested along the way, right? Right. What you think you believe gets tested along the way. Absolutely. And if it, and if the foundation of it isn't real and strong and true, it'll fall, it'll crumble. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm proud, so proud of, you know, I think that what I've learned so much in terms of, uh, you know the, the people and the process, and then ultimately your purpose. You know why do you believe these things? Why am I leading? Why are you in this position? Why are you, why are you doing what you're doing? And those things get tested along the way. And when you find out that there's some substance behind it, that's what allows you to have the chance. It doesn't make you successful. It'll give you a chance to become successful. Uh, learn that. Um, continue to learn that. Continue to grow and, and grow off of that. Um, uh, being a leader of our program now, Coach. Uh I can tell you the best is yet to come for Buffalo, definitely for yourself, your family, man. I, I, I am so appreciative of this time. This was uh, 
very special. Uh, number one, been a former teammate, a friend, and and just the knowledge that you just dropped, man. It's, it's, it's the football life for me and you, man. Yeah. We're sitting by sitting next to each other, going through the, going through the battles every day, man. <laughs> going right, man. running the cross fields and, <laughs> and and fighting our butt off every week that's to get right, it get man. it done, man. And, and look look how powerful the game is. The game is yeah, that's right, look how man. powerful. Look at look at the big circle. Look at life journey, and and it, you know it just uh, is phenomenal. And I want to say this to you in this area on this platform. You're a tremendous husband, tremendous father. Uh, you're doing phenomenal work here, AFCA. Uh, you're creating this platform that I think is leaving a great ripple effect in our society. Um, you're doing phenomenal work, man. And Thanks, I man. want people to know, man, all the stuff that you're doing here is, is, is really cool. I think neat is special. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, didn't have these kind of opportunities. Maybe a lot of coaches 20 years ago that they're here now. And I think a lot of the vision that you had and, and then and then Todd Berry and the work that he does here at AFCA and so thankful that to be on the board of trustees and and sitting in that room, I told Todd Barry this last night at dinner. Uh, I got a lot, a lot to still learn and grow from, and he, you know, he's like, "Coach, you're going to do great," and I'm really glad to have you on the board. But I'm thankful um, that uh, he saw something in me to uh, to bring me on that that board, so we can continue to shape and have influence in our game of football that we love. Um, and 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 I want to prove him right. I want to I want to prove right. Coach Barry right, and I, and I want to. So if you're listening, Coach, and I know you're going to hear it someday, I just want you to know that I want, hopefully I, I, my work and, I, and, and the diligence we have, I, I prove you right. That's right. That's right. And, and real quick, because uh, you kind of hit on the AFC, and I did want to ask you about that. Yeah, just a one-liner, two-liner. Young, oh, yeah. Young coaches, old coaches, coaches yeah. that have never been affiliated with AFCA. Why is it important to be involved with this association? And why has it been important for yeah, you? Yeah, for me, AFCA, okay? First convention I ever went to was in Anaheim, California. Um, uh Got got in that one room with, a, with twenty people sleeping on the, you know, all yeah. those things, oh, yeah. man. But had the opportunity to learn and grow, and I just think that um, as much as this the community of coaches coming together, I think uh, uh, the the experience and like the transformation that I went through, just sitting in rooms, sitting in those big buzz sessions, sitting in the the big speaking sessions, and hearing all these phenomenal coaches that. Um, uh, that have been successful in all these different levels, share their insight and their knowledge on the game that we love, I would leave the convention. I was like, I can't get to a computer fast enough. I can't wait yeah. to implement this, the new idea here. So it's been a growth for me. And then I always felt like uh, just from a the responsibility to contribute, uh, I'm going to come back. I want to – I mean, I don't. I don't want anything. I just want a platform to contribute, and and um, you know the opportunities for me to speak in buzz sessions, and me to speak in different op uh, different forums, and being on different committees, and do different things, and yeah. just sharing this football community. And that's what we have. It. I think what you what what AFCA is ultimately created is a community. It's a community of coaches, a community of supporters that all love the game, that inspire, uh, that aspire. Uh, to inspire to make this game as phenomenal as and impactful as possible, and I think that's what this game is about. That's what it allows us to do. It allows us to touch lives. It allows us to touch some kid that's 12 years old in Chicago right now that's listening, that wants to get involved in the game of football and where it can lead you and what it can do for you in your life. And you know, I met my wife through really because of my football choice and coming to Baylor. I got my education, my undergrad, my master's here at Baylor be through football. Uh, football is what I do now, and it's it's um, it's a passion that God has put in, for, in me in my life, and I think AFCA has just allowed us to uh, build on that from a big exponential standpoint. Absolutely, Coach. I know you got to get going, but you just <laughs> mentioned your first your first convention, and um, I've been on the stage with Ryan Day, <laughs> and I asked him about his first convention, and it, it's funny everybody's first story. Yeah. Uh, I just remember my first convention was actually up in Dallas. And I remember at the time it was Larry Coker. It was it was that group of guys. The guys, man, yeah. And, use, I, yeah. and I saw him. I'm like, wow. Can I do this? <laughs> can I can I be that guy? <laughs> yes. Can I coach at the Division One level? Yeah. I'm a GA. How yeah. am I going to do it? There's so many guys that want the same job. D did you have that moment? And would you ever think as quickly as this kind of came that, that that you'll be the guy that walks past and, and it's a bunch of young coaches saying, it's Coach Lakers. <laughs> I don't know if they're looking at me that way. If they are, I appreciate it, man. I, but I 100%, I mean, you feel the weight of it. Yeah. You okay. feel the responsibility, man. You walk past the boat, go in the hallway, and you see some of these uh, Mac Browns and Urban Myers and yeah. some of these, I mean, they're legends. They're right. legendary men that you're like, oh, man, God, these are the guys, man. And, and then uh, – 
you know, you kind of go back to the instincts, man. You go back to, you know what? Hey, man, I got I to gotta put that healthy competitive chip on my shoulder, man. I got to get after it, man. I'm about to, okay, man, I'm going to roll up my sleeves, man. I'm about to send some faxes, which they don't do anymore, make some coffee. I'm about to go get some donuts, man. I'm about to work, hustle, and and uh, see if we can really get this thing done. And and uh, thankful, thankful for the opportunity yeah. that I that I have now to run my run my uh, program and organization with the other coaches that I have on the staff and, and all the administration there supporting me there. Um, not sure if I at the time could have said, yeah, you know what, that this is going to happen this yeah. way and you're going to be in that position, but I knew that I was ready to compete. That's all, that's all <laughs> I was ready to go. Well, hey, man, best of luck to you um, uh, as we roll into the summer, looking to the fall, and can't Definitely. see you there in Nashville for the 24 convention, man. Definitely. Thank, Thank you so much, man. Appreciate, appreciate you, Mario. You. Thank you, man. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at afca.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at We Are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.